Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of the WASP development logs. In this uh, series of videos I'm gonna be presenting in a bit of a rougher way compared to the video tutorials the new features I'm currently working on and I'm currently implementing in WASP. And uh, I'll also explain you how these are implemented in like beta versions of WASP and so the first thing that I want to do in this number in the first log is showing you actually how you can get uh, development versions of WASP which are not posted on Food for Rhino uh, but you can get them directly from GitHub. So if you navigate uh, to the WASP GitHub repository and I'm gonna add um, a link to it in the description of this video you can find all the source code of WASP but here on the right side what you can actually find is uh, all the releases that have been made and you will see that here what you see is uh, WASP 028, which is the same version that is available on Food for Rhino. And the only reason why you see this one is that this is the last stable release uh, of WASP. However, if you click on this 15 other releases, you can see that you open a list of releases that has way more releases than the one that have been posted on Food for Rhino. And the reason for that is that these are releases which are not stable, but where I was testing new features. And so before releasing them on Food for Rhino, I always want to make sure that everything works or at least as much as possible works. So here you will find a bunch of other releases. And if you want to go and download them, you can just go for each of them under assets. And you will find a zip file that contains exactly the same files that you would find in a stable release of Wasp. So you can just click here and go on and save this file and then you can install Wasp in the same way in which you're used to. So uh, today I'm going to illustrate a, a new feature which I've added in version 04002 which is a feature that several people have been asking for and this feature is the ability to fix the seed of the random generator in the stochastic aggregation and what this allows you to do is it allows you to regenerate random aggregations but to have a consistent result so that when you fix a seed you will always get the same random uh, we'll get a random structure but it's always going to be the same random structure and by changing the seed you can actually generate different randoms so I'll uh, link a file in the description, but just for you to see, this is a super basic aggregation which just has one part with three uh, connections. And so if you installed WASP 04002, as um, I just showed you, if you go under aggregation and get a stochastic aggregation, you will see that the stochastic aggregation component has one extra input, and this extra input is the seed input. So Let's start by setting up an aggregation the way we are used to and the way we know how to do it. So we're going to connect our parts to part. I'm going to specify the number of parts I want, which is going to be, for example, 120. For the rules, I'm just going to grab a rule generator and set it to default to create rules between all types of connections. And then I'll connect it to rules. And then I'm just going to create a button which is going to connect to reset. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go under parts and use get part geometry. And there we go. We can maybe create a custom preview to see it a bit better and a bit less messy. And then we hide the geometry. I can also go to display and hide the mesh wires. And here we go. So you see that now I created a random aggregation and I can of course grow it and shrink it and so on. But what's happening whenever I hit reset is that this aggregation gets every time regenerated and every time it's a different random aggregation and I have no way to uh, regenerate the same exact aggregation I generated once. The only way you have to have something like that it would be to save that aggregation in a, with a save component and then reload it. Now, that's where the new seed comes into play. So by default, if you leave the seed empty, the random seed generator will get, the random generator will get a seed assigned, which is equal to the current moment in time. So we're just reading the time down to the second and then assigning that as a number. So in this way, the uh, result will never be unique. However, will never be this, the same, will always be unique. So what you can do is instead you can just go to the seed, 
component and for example fix this seed so let's say I'm gonna fix it to 5 and now you'll see that if I keep resetting this aggregation the aggregation does not change but stays the same but if I change the seed for example to 6 and I hit aggregation now I'm creating a new aggregation but again if I keep resetting without changing the seed that stays the same now of course the one thing that you can easily do with this is that I'm gonna create a larger number so let's say 120 again so that I have more numbers here if instead of using a button in the reset you use a toggle and make sure that the toggle is set to true now what you can do is you can use this seed to explore all kind of possible aggregations that can be generated with different seeds and with this fixed number of parts so let's say then now I want to see the aggregation at 200 and that looks something like this and now let's suppose that uh, I want to start playing around and searching for other ones and then I just realized that actually I don't like all the other one I created but I like the 200 so I can go back and here we go I go back to the one that I had before now the other thing that you can do which is quite fun is of course you can use different kind of iterative um, systems to cycle between different aggregations so few of you have been asking about being able to use Galapagos to generate aggregations now I'm gonna show you how to do it and you actually can do it however it makes very little sense because a, a random seed is a completely random number so there is no um, logic behind it so um, an evolutionary algorithm will always try to match the parameter trying to find to fit a certain function so a certain fitness function so to find some sort of a logic within uh, the numbers that get created now we can do it with Galapagos and then I'm gonna also show you a quicker way to do it by just creating a counter so let's say for example that we want to create let's say an aggregation with let's say 150 oh, that's a bit too much let's say 150 parts and let's say that I want to cycle between these thousand of possible aggregations and find the aggregation that has the, um, the smallest volume so what I can do is I can get all my parts coming out here and I can create a bounding box I select union box to make sure that it's one box and then I can measure the volume of this box Here we go, so I can just visualize it just to know what it is. And now what I can do is I can pull my seed down here and I can create a Galapagos component. And so my fitness is gonna be the volume number that I get there and my genome is gonna be my seed. If I now double click on the Galapagos interface and I said I wanna get the smallest volume so I'm gonna minimize and as I just go and start the solver the solver will start going for a while and we'll start exploring the uh, all the possible space of the um, of the slider so all the possible seeds and then return me slowly the um, the smallest possible volume the small the aggregation that fills the smallest possible volume now you'll see that there is not really like what you would want to see in an evolutionary process is you would want to see this red curve going from very low all the way up where it's just managing to fit the, the values as better as possible now that's not gonna really happen exactly because we are just shuffling a seed which is just gonna generate random numbers so there is no direct relation between different seeds so it's not that if seed 520 it's good it doesn't mean that seed 521 it's also good which is what it's assumed in an evolutionary process so as I said you could do it it's gonna work for doing this but it's not really efficient so a more efficient way to do it I'm gonna delete this 
is to simply cycle through all the seeds that you have, record the values, and then select the best one. So you can do that by getting, by merging these two values. So I'm gonna merge the volume and the seed. So I'm gonna set the seed to zero, for example. So I'm gonna merge my seed and my volume and I'm gonna flatten both of them. So that now every time I move a slider, I have a combination of two values generated. So one of them is the volume and the second one is the, uh, uh, the seed itself that generated that volume. What I can then do is I can create a record, a data recorder. I'm gonna turn it off for now. And what I'm gonna do is, so just for you to see, I'm gonna create a panel. Of course, there's no data coming in for now, but if I start the recorder and I start moving my slider, what I'm generating is a list of values in which I have these couples of values in which the first value is always the volume and the second value is always the uh, seed that generated. Of course, I'm moving the slider by hand, so it's not gonna be uh, filling all the values, but you could do that with um, with a counter or with Python or with animate slider, but just for you to see. So now that I have this big list of values, I can, for example, stop the recording. I can partition this list in groups of two. So then now I have branches in which in each branch the first element is the volume and the second element is the uh, seed. And what I can then do is I can sort this list and I'm gonna get a list item where like the first list that comes out is of course the volume and the second one it's gonna be the seed. So if I now sort them I should actually flatten both of them. If I now sort this list, I'm gonna get my volume sorted as well as my seed sorted uh, according to the volume. So if I now go and get a list item to get here, what I'm getting here now is the seed which generated the structure with the lowest volume. If I now go here and I put it, I actually found it. Now I can always go here and delete the data and add the recording again. And then as I said, you could just run over this and run over the whole slider. Of course, it's a bit of a rough way, but as I said, you could always automate this. I'm just not doing that for now. And so now that I scrolled through a bunch of them, I know that 576 was the seed between all the one I crossed that created this smallest value. And here you go, I can just input it and I have it. So this is how you can navigate different aggregations that can be generated and kind of evaluate certain performance criteria. Now here I'm evaluating the volume, but you could literally do anything. You could run simulations, you could run structural simulations, you could run uh, environmental simulations. So you could just evaluate these completely random structures that are generated and try to s sort between them and find the one that have um, the best performance according to what you're looking for. So it's a complete random search process. It's definitely not the most efficient, but you can use it to start sorting certain aggregations that perform better than others. Another fun thing that you can do is I'm going to disable of this for now and move it off so it doesn't bother me, is that besides creating um, individual aggregations, now by changing the seed you can also create multiple aggregations out of the same component. For example, if I create a series so a series, for example, in this case, I'm going to have the start number at zero, the step size will stay at one, and the count will be, let's say, 10, but I'm going to connect a slider, so let's say 12. 
So if now I'm going to connect this seed, this output to the seed, what's going to happen is that instead of getting one aggregation here, I'm going to be getting 12 aggregations. And of course you cannot really see them because they are kind of overlapping. But what we can do is we can create a second series, which is going to have the same number of elements and we are going to add a bit of spacing. So let's say 500. And I'm going to create an unit X vector and provide these values as, um, as the magnitude of this vector. And if I now create a move component and get my part geometries and my vectors there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the vectors and graft it. I can then connect this to my preview. And you see that what I've done is I've created a variation of a bunch of different aggregations that I can actually visualize. And then of course you could do the same that we've done. So you could evaluate them according to parameters. And so you see that what we can do is we can visualize them like this, but we can also go and shrink them. Of course, it's going to be a bit slower, shrink them all together or grow them. And we have the different results uh, displayed here. So yeah, that's it. That's all for what I wanted to show you for the for this new feature. Uh, please go on GitHub, grab it, test it, and uh, let me know if anything doesn't work the way it's supposed, or if you think that the workflow should be different. And I'm looking forward to your comments. You can join the Discord chat and post in the development channel if you have ideas of how to make it better or how to make it work in a different way. If you're good coders and you can code in Python, you're also welcome to fork the base repository and implement um, implement your own version. And I'm going to definitely look into it. And if it works, just bring it into the main wasp. So that's it for today and have a nice rest of the day and see you soon here. Bye.